What's going on guys? So today we're gonna to be revisiting Diona. I've been using Diona in almost all of my team comps since her release back on the child banner. In my opinion, Diona is one of the best utility supports in the game. Diona is valuable to almost any team comp and she brings an array of different abilities which can be tailored through the use of artifact sets and playstyle. In my opinion, she rivals Bennett as an overall utility support. I think that Diona isn't fully understood by the community and that a lot of people aren't making use of her to her fullest potential. Although she seems to be highly rated in tier lists, she does not seem to get the praise from the community that she deserves. With a large number of players now trying to beat floor 12 of the Spiral Abyss and the upcoming patch 1.2 Dragon Spine update, she's only getting better and becoming even more useful. If any of you guys are using Diona in your team comps, let me know how you use her down in the comments. I love getting the community's feedback. In this video, I'm going to share the reasons why Diona is my favorite support character, my current Diona build, and how she is becoming more and more useful as the game progresses. Let's talk about why Diona is currently my favorite support character. Diona's kit can be optimized to fit almost any team composition. She can be built to fit your team with using different artifact set bonuses and main stats. Her kit can be optimized for healing, shielding, or other support functions. We'll talk about my favorite builds in a little bit. The second reason Diona is my favorite support is because she is easy to build and mostly benefits from HP stats and energy recharge. You can build elemental mastery, but you're most likely not using her as the trigger in elemental reactions, and therefore her elemental mastery and attack aren't used in calculating reaction damage. The third reason is that shields are becoming more and more important as content gets more challenging, and Diona can supply a shield with almost 80% uptime. Her shield duration is customizable, allowing you either to proc cryo more often or keep her shield up for longer with a higher damage absorption percentage. Fourth, Diona makes use of cryo, which is one of the best elements in the game for reactions that deal a lot of damage. These reactions are melt and superconduct. Diona can debuff with cryo every six seconds while providing protection. If you're using a pyro DPS, such as Klee, you can apply Diona's shield, proc cryo, and switch to your main DPS for insane melt damage. If you're using a hybrid electro-physical DPS, such as Beidou or Kaching, or another physical DPS with an electro support such as Fischl, you can apply Diona's shield, proc cryo, perform superconduct, and then attack with physical damage for 40% reduction in physical defense. Diona's elemental burst procs cryo every two seconds for a total of 12 seconds and covers a very large area. This means that when her ult is up, melt or superconduct can be applied to a large mob of enemies for even more damage. The fifth reason is that Diona's kit is primarily built around shielding and healing your team. However, she can do a lot more than this. Let's talk about the two most common builds, and then I'll explain my current Diona build, as it will be easier to understand after we discuss these first two. For all of these builds, I would recommend using a bow with an energy recharge secondary stat, such as a sacrificial bow or Favonius war bow, in order to access her ult more often. If you want Diona to be the best healer that she can be, run a four-piece Maiden's Beloved set with healing bonus on the circlet and HP on the goblet in the sands. With this build, you will gain a 15% healing bonus from the two-piece Maiden's Beloved set, a 20% healing bonus from the four-piece set when using her elemental burst, and the additional healing bonus on the circlet. In this scenario, Diona will provide decent shields and excellent healing capability. The amount Diona can heal is calculated based on her max HP after artifact set bonuses, and her healing will pulse a total of six times when her elemental burst is up. If you want a better balance of shielding and healing, you can still equip Diona with the four-piece Maiden's Beloved set, but go for an HP main stat on the circlet. This was the build I was running before I switched to the build I'm running today. Just like Diona's HP generation, her shield strength scales fully off of her maximum HP. By switching out the main stat on the circlet, you will lose up to a 35.9% healing bonus, but her shield and healing will still both benefit from the HP main stat, and her shield scales more sharply with HP than her healing does. My Diona currently has a max HP of 16,794. With this max HP, my Diona's shield strength is 2,446 or 4,279, depending on the duration of her shield. With this same max HP and no healing bonuses, Diona heals for 1,650 for a single tick, 
or 9,900 for a total of six ticks. With a four-piece Maiden set, this will increase to a total healing of 16,919. I prefer this build over putting an additional healing bonus on the circlet, as I'd rather not take damage in the first place, and her burst has a total energy cost of 80, which does take some time to get back up. It seems like every video on YouTube focuses on healing. I personally do not build Diona with any healing bonuses, although I do run HP main stats on the goblet and circlet to boost her healing and shields. I do not need Diona to do any damage, I only need her to be an enabler for other DPS units on my team. Her healing capability just cannot compete with better and more consistent healers like Chi Chi, Barbara, and Jean because of the high energy cost and relatively low healing potential. That said, I do use her healing as a last resort when trying to survive more difficult content, and it is still extremely valuable. So unless you do not have a better healer to run, let's discuss the build that I like best on Diona. For this case, we still run HP main stats where we can, as we do not need Diona to do damage. For this build, the 2P set does not do much for her. But because we are running HP main stats and do not care too much about the substats, this set should not be too hard to farm. My current build uses the Noblesse Oblige 4-piece set. With the 4-piece set, all party members gain a 20% attack boost when she performs her burst. Her burst is a 12-second cryo field, and I make use of this field in two ways. The first is for performing Melt Reactions. Melt Reactions do two times the damage of the normal attack and are the strongest reactions in the game. With the Noblesse set, the character performing Melt will gain an additional 20% attack boost, similar to equipping another 2-piece Gladiator set. The second is for performing Superconduct. If you're using a physical damage dealer on your team, Superconduct is a must as it reduces enemies' physical resistance by 40%. On top of this, your physical DPS will gain a 20% attack boost from Diona after she puts out her burst. This combo works well with Kaching, Beidou, or Fischl as all three can do good physical damage and proc Superconduct. Now let's talk about Diona's viability moving forward into the future of Genshin Impact. It was recently officially announced that with patch 1.2, MiHoYo is introducing the new Blizzard Strayer artifact set, as well as the new Cryo DPS unit, Ganyu. Diona is going to synergize extremely well with DPS characters that use the new Cryo artifact set. Each elemental combo in Genshin Impact has a specific elemental resonance. When two Cryo characters are on the same team, they are affected by Electro for 40% less time, and their crit rate against enemies that are frozen or affected by cryo is increased by 15%. Now I would not necessarily recommend running the Blizzard Strayer set on Diona, but if you're running these on a cryo main DPS such as Kaya or Chang Yun, or the future waifus Ganyu and Ayaka with Diona in your party, you will get a further increase in crit rate. The four piece set bonus from the Blizzard Strayer set states that when a character attacks an enemy affected by cryo, their crit rate is increased by 20%. If the enemy is frozen, the crit rate is increased by an additional 20%. Up until now, we haven't really had a good cryo main DPS. Well, with the new artifacts coming, Chan Yun will likely become very viable as a main DPS. Ganyu is coming in patch 1.2, and from what we've seen, she appears to also be a main DPS, and we have Ayaka coming in patch 1.3. Now let's look at all the set bonuses that you'll get while running Diona with the Noblesse set and running another Cryo DPS with the new four-piece Blizzard Strayer set. For attack and damage bonuses, you're gonna get 15% additional Cryo damage bonus from the four-piece Blizzard Strayer set and a 20% additional attack bonus from the four-piece Noblesse set when Diona's burst is activated. As far as crit rate bonuses go, your main DPS will get 15% crit rate from the Cryo Resonance plus an additional 20 to 40% crit rate from the four-piece Blizzard Strayer set. Every character also has a 5% base crit rate. That's up to 60% crit rate without any artifact or weapon stats, which is huge. Any way to get crit rate outside of artifact main or substats is extremely helpful and makes RNG way less painful. Okay, so even if you do not plan to use a Cryo DPS with the launch of patch 1.2, Diona is still getting better. Diona's shield strength is increased against Cryo by 250%. Therefore, my current shield absorption of 4,279 increases to 10,697 against Cryo. That is well over half of the HP of the majority of my DPS units, which is massive. The Dragonspine region is coming with patch 1.2 on December 23rd. From what I've seen, almost every new enemy being introduced into the game is going to be Cryo. 
This gives a huge buff to Diona and her shielding capabilities. Additionally, as more players take on the Spiral Abyss, more will get to floor 12. Floor 12 is stacked with cryo enemies. This shield increase becomes quite significant and could carry you through this stage. I really do believe that Diona's potential has not been fully realized by the majority of the player base and that she will only be getting better as time goes on. If you guys have any other suggestions for Diona builds or team comps in the future, let me know down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you guys did, please consider subscribing down below. I put out a Genshin Impact video just like this every single week. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.